Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm greeting you from a beautiful autumn's day in Cape Town, South Africa. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the weather is changing and so is the season. And in a strange way, today commemorates something that is ending for you uh, and hopefully the start of something else as well. Allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to say a very hearty welcome to everyone from wherever you're dialing in from, whichever country you're coming from, and thank you for putting it in the chat to just inform us from which country in Africa on the continent um, you are joining us from. I'm reminded of a little anecdote from um, Bill Gates. We all know Bill Gates is known for the fact that he used to be a university dropout. And Gates says that when he started out his career, when he was still young, um, in other words, he didn't have all this gray hair that I right now have. He was still very young. He used to work hard. He said weekends didn't exist for him. In fact, he said he used to have his office in such a way positioned so that he could have an eye on the parking lot, just noticing who's leaving early, who's working until late. And Gates says it was only later in his life when he has become more and more mature that he realized that work is not everything, that he realized there's more to life than work. And the lesson he says that he took from that is that we one shouldn't wait until this long, until you gray, um, to realize that lesson that he has learned. And he's saying to people that take the time now to nurture your relationships, to recover from your losses, but most of all, to celebrate your successes. And ladies and gentlemen, today is what we want to do all about. It's today about how can we celebrate our successes. So ladies and gentlemen, I extend this invitation to you to with us as Stellenbosch Business School Executive Development, with us to celebrate your achievement, your hard work that has happened over the last year in your academic uh, sphere as well. So let's enjoy this time and make the most of it um, as we celebrate today. At this point in time, ladies and gentlemen, in order for us to really make this the best enjoyment, the best celebration ever, there's a need for us to have some housekeeping rules or guidelines, I should say. Usually I would say, if you are at home right now, you may want to check where the bathrooms are. So please do that. Um, and also just watch for the traffic in the passage. You never know who you may bump into. Jokes aside, ladies and gentlemen, maybe just to help us get through this morning, um, can I remind you to please keep your videos on during the ceremony? It's so great when we can see your face. You all look so beautiful. I can see some of you, not all of you, but I can see some of you. I'm also going to ask you that if you can please keep your microphone switched off while we have speakers busy speaking as well. I know you are avid and experienced Zoomers, and so therefore you are aware of where to do that. If you're not aware of how to do that, please just check at the bottom of your screen. You will see there's a little microphone icon with the word mute, and if you click on it, a red line will cover, and that will mean that your microphone is switched off. Also, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to invite you to share your thoughts and comments within the chat. I'm so grateful that my colleagues already invited you to do that. And I can already see just on my screen, uh, there's more than 100 comments already within the chat. So well done on doing that. We invite you to continue doing that during the course of the morning. And obviously, ladies and gentlemen, this is all about celebration. Um, and what a disappointment it would be if your name is called and no one is applaud uh, applauding for you. So may I ask everyone present this morning, when we get to that stage of the ceremony, please switch off your microphones at that stage and applaud, celebrate, shout for your fellow colleagues, for your uh, fellow participants, um, so that we can make them feel special for this morning as well. During the course of the morning, we know that the ceremony can get a little bit long, um, and so therefore we've worked in a little five-minute leg stretch 
I want to emphasize that, that um, we're going to stick to five minutes so that we don't sort of keep you away from celebrating in another form uh, later in the day. We know that some of you are going to celebrate like only us as Africans can. And then lastly, ladies and gentlemen, I, may I appeal to you, um, this ceremony is an important ceremony for many of us. And what a disappointment if we have no one present. So we're grateful that you are present this morning. But may I ask that you stay until the end, even after your name has been called. And hopefully these housekeeping guidelines will help us to enjoy a wonderful occasion this morning. In addition to that, I've mentioned earlier on Engage With Us. On the screen, you'll see at this time that these are all the platforms that you can engage with us on social media. May we encourage you to please do so. Periodically during the course of the morning, I will encourage you to continue to do that. And we thank you in anticipation for sharing with us and engaging with us on the social media platforms. Right, ladies and gentlemen, let us get this process going. For this morning, I am your pilot and you will be journeying with me as we go through the course of the morning. And my name is Kevin Henderson, as you can see on the order of proceedings. After I've done um, all the announcements for to start us out, we will have our CEO, Dr. Chris van der Wuffen, who will do the official welcome and his welcome message, which will be followed by um, the representative from the Alumni Association, uh, Dr. Geraldine Abaidu, who will address us. And Dr. Geraldine will be followed by our keynote address, which will be delivered by Dr. Rutendo Windingwe. Ladies and gentlemen, and then after that, we'll start with the most important business of this morning, which is the actual certificate award procession. Um, my colleague, uh, my fellow proposal and design specialist, Mr. Mujahid Thebus, who should be known to many of you in the Africa um, region, um, will facilitate that process for us. Uh, Mujahid will be followed by the channel director for Africa, who will do our his director's closing and thanks, uh, Mr. Jim Linsky, after which, ladies and gentlemen, I will close the ceremony around about just before one o'clock South African time, as I will then wish you well and uh, give you formal permission to enjoy a beverage of your choice as you celebrate your wonderful achievement today. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I trust that all of those things are clear and that we have some idea in terms of how we are journeying for yeah. this morning. Now, usually they will announce in the event of the loss of uh, cabin treasure, the mask will drop from the roof. I'm not going to say that this morning, but I am getting ready so that I can introduce our first speaker who will do the CEO message and the CEO's welcome address. Ladies and gentlemen, the SBS Ed has been very fortunate to be led by our CEO, Dr. Chris van der Wuffen since 2018. Uh, I know that uh, Dr. van der Wuffen is not a man who enjoys mm -hmm. making a big fuss of him, but uh, I will indulge this morning and say, um, Dr. van der Wuffen has a great passion for the learning and learning space. He particularly enjoys working with CEOs um, where he, because he understands how lonely that journey can be. Dr. van der Wuffen particularly enjoys being an objective sounding board to, to CEOs. And that kind of experience he brings not only to fellow colleagues, but also to the people in our business. And so ladies and gentlemen, Dr. van der Wuffen, he keeps himself sharp uh, by using the old sharpening he saw um, by continuously and ongoingly supervising other PhD students. Having said that, most of all, he's our CEO, and we are grateful to have him with us this morning. May I invite you, ladies and gentlemen, your hands and mine, as we welcome Dr. Chris van der Wuffen. Thank you, Kevin. Um, distinguished guests, 
fellow speakers, faculty, colleagues, our esteemed participants and their loved ones. Um, it's, a, it's a joy to be able to share this moment with you. Welcome. Our participants are, of course, our true guests of honor. To, to all of you joining us from across the continent, I extend the warmest of welcomes. I am, as you heard from Kevin, Chris van der Werfen, the CEO of Stellenbosch Business School Executive Development. Um, like Iron Man in the Avengers, Batman in the Justice League, or Bumblebee in the Transformers. Now, I'm, I'm assuming that by now I've lost half of you. Um, but if you are still with me, that's excellent. I have the pleasure of leading this incredible team of super, superheroes. Um, as an aside and for the sake of humility, um, I would point out that each of these leaders has character flaws. Uh, when you get down to it, Bumblebee's normal form is, a, is that of a lowly VW Beetle. Um, even more seriously, the quality of what we do has two major contributing elements. The, the caliber of our courses, and of course, the caliber of our participants. In everything that we do, our ambition is threefold. To develop people, to impact business, and to transform lives. With this mission in mind, um, we're unwavering in our commitment to providing people development solutions that are not only relevant to today's business landscape, but also focused on meeting the challenges and opportunities that await us into the future. Our ultimate aim is to unlock potential and to foster sustainable impact. Of course, this can only be done through you, our participants. For the participants, this event marks the culmination of an epic phase, a journey that does not have an end, um, or in a journey that doesn't have an end. As ambassadors for Stellenbosch Business School and as exemplars of responsible leadership, this is a pivot point. Your commitment must surely be to apply your knowledge and wisdom in the service of your community and of society. And I, I use community in a in a broad sense of the definition, because obviously your, your stakeholders and those beyond your normal stakeholder group fit into that definition. Th this is what the famous academics, Nanaka and Takauchi, they are J uh, Japanese academics, specialists in the field of strategy and, and knowledge development. They called this kind of leadership frenetic leadership. In other words, the application of not just knowledge, but also wisdom, because knowing it doesn't mean that you can wisely apply it. And so the combination of those two things, they call frenetic leadership. It's, it's understanding not just what to say, but also when to say it, as an example. So at this point, the biggest shift should be the confirmation or the realization for some of you that it's no longer just about you. It's about them. It's about the community and about society. It's not just about you. And the sooner you are on board with the idea that your progress is subject to the progress of those people who you can lift around you, the better. If I have one wish for you, it's that you will eventually look back on your life and be able to say that you maximized your potential. Um, and, and that when it came to making an effort for friends, family, colleagues, and society, you left nothing on the table. The world is crying out for people like you, leaders who can navigate complexity with clarity and confidence, leaders who can find the best path and show the rest of us the way. Once again, on behalf of uh, us, all of us at Stellenbosch Business School Executive Development, congratulations to you all. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you so much, Dr. Chris, uh, for your beautiful words of encouragement. And um, I always thought the Japanese only makes sushi. Thank you for reminding me that they're also in the space of leadership and the concept of frenetic leadership uh, as well. And what a privilege for us to be part and parcel of this team where we look at our ambition in terms of developing people and impacting business as well. And we're grateful that we could have played a role in many of the participants this morning. Uh, and, and we trust that they will testify to that. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Chris for your wonderful words. Ladies and gentlemen, the Alumni Association is a very important part of the Stellenbosch University, of, of that ecosystem. And many of you this morning will become part and uh, parcel from, uh, of that particular organization. Here today, um, to share some more around 
the alumni association and the work that they do, we have someone calling in from Ghana. May I introduce the representative from the alumni association? Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Geraldine Abaidu um, is a business school alumnus uh, with a career spanning over 24 years. Dr. Abaidu embodies the epitome of an alumnus personifying excellence in leadership and in business. Currently, she is serving as the board chairperson of Holland Life in Ghana, the founder slash director of Perfocus Innovations and director of the International Institute for African Scholars. Dr. Abaidu has left an indelible mark in her fields. Her visionary leadership has led to groundbreaking initiatives, including Ghana's inaugural Bank Assurance Partnership, shaping the landscape of the industry. Beyond her professional endeavors, Dr. Abaidu is a beacon of inspiration, actively engaged in mentoring aspiring leaders and championing positive societal change. Her commitment to community and social impact initiatives is truly commendable, and we look forward to inspiring all of us here this morning. As a cherished member of our alumni association, Dr. Abadu embodies the values of excellence, integrity, and lifelong learning. Her ability to blend academic acumen with practical wisdom enriches every role she undertakes, leaving a positive impact on all those she has encountered in her life. So please, ladies and gentlemen, extend your warmest welcome to Dr. Geraldine as she takes us through the Alumni Association and her role and experience within the association today. Your hands and mine for Dr. Geraldine Abaidu. Thank you so much, Kelvin. <laughs> I, I was listening to whether I, I, I fit the bill. But thank you so much for that beautiful um, celebration of my achievement. Um, I'm excited to be here this morning because um, believe you me, when there's graduation or certification awards, normally those of us who have passed through, we tend to enjoy because we, we really live the moment that we also experience um, that um, celebration. So I'm so excited, even more than those going to get the asset paid. Um, distinguished guests, beloved family members, esteemed graduates, ladies and gentlemen, I'm deeply honored to address a gathering of accomplished individuals representing diverse industries and sectors across the co continent. Your presence here today is a testament to your unwavering commitment to personal growth professional excellence and lifelong learning. We had our CEO reiterating that point. Whether you are a seasoned executive, a rising leader, or an aspiring entrepreneur, your dedication and lifelong learning to advance your knowledge and skills is truly commendable. Today marks a momentous occasion to celebrate our remarkable achievements. Uh, as graduates of the Africa Executive Development Program at Stellenbosch School Executive Development. I extend my heartfelt congratulations to our graduates on reaching this significant milestone in your professional journey. Your dedication, perseverance, and commitment to excellence have not gone unnoticed. Well, in celebrating your achievement today, we also recognize the invaluable support and encouragement provided by your family members and loved ones. And believe you me, we needed it because this course or the cohorts you belong to is a very rigorous one. And you need all the time, the support, and the pampering to be able to sail successfully through. Um, they are unwavering belief in your potential and their steadfast support have been instrumental in your success and they deserve our heartfelt gratitude and appreciation. I said this year's ceremony is remarkable because we have several countries represented 
in our programs and well over 250 delegates attending the ceremony from three graduating courts, which are the African New Management Development Program, Africa Management Development Program, and Africa Senior Management Development Program, of which I had a taste of, and I'm so blessed to have participated in that. Successful completion of our middle, senior, and executive level programs offers participants access to the Stellenbosch Business School Alumni Association. And I want to emphasize that it provides extensive network opportunities with over 30,000 alums, industry leaders, and global stakeholders to enhance professional connection and opportunities for collaboration. I want to be the first alum to welcome you as an alumnus of our beloved institute. For the NMDP graduates here today, we hope to see you join us for the MDP, SMDP, or EDP in the future, so you too can join our prestigious, prestigious Aluminum Association and network with the colleagues in this room and beyond as part of the network. A bit of history about our association. In 1986, the Stellenbosch Business School Alumni Association was established. And I'm proud to say that 30 years after its establishment, I became the Ghana Chapter's Chair and an active member of the Alumni Association. Before this, in 2012, I had, I had one year SMDP program and have enjoyed tremendous support with its attendance benefits. Today, we have a robust network of almost 30,000 members across 15 chapters in Africa. We have the UAE, Europe, the UK, and Canada. And as you are here today, I want to encourage you and urge you that you can find your chapter closer to you than you think. Find and join your ready alumni chapter to feed forward and enrich your endeavors. Let me emphasize that each of you now share the personal link with the business school and the alumni association. This network is a powerful platform for collaboration, networking, enjoyment, and lifelong learning, connecting leaders from diverse backgrounds, cultures, and industries. Did I tell you I returned in 2021 to offer women in leadership course at Stellenbosch? Yeah, I have also encouraged several Ghanaian executives to get a feel of the SBS ed. Do not forget to create an alumni account. In, at the beginning, Kelvin shared the social media handles we also have the portal. Please go and create your account because there are so many tools, resources, and network that you can leverage on to advance your course. Believe you me, I wouldn't have been here or met you, but for this network. And I'm proud, alum, and excited to be here today. Let me give you a brief of the network. It brings together educated leaders from different backgrounds, cultures, countries, companies, and industries that are joined by a golden thread of an intense and often life-changing development experience. We had our CEO say that the value is its global reach. So anywhere you go in the world, there's an alum you can connect with to support you, to lead you, to share ideas with. The continuous access to business knowledge and potential opportunities it's untold. Take advantage of the various events, workshops, masterclasses, awards, recognition, and pre out to advance your cause and positively change your society and your space. Engage with us on our social media handles. Of course, you have demonstrated exceptional leadership potential and a thirst for truly commendable knowledge, which is evidence of your unwavering dedication. You are leaders in your respective fields, I must say, navigating the complexities of the ever evolving global business landscape with vision, innovation, and strategic acumen from mastering the art of strategic decision-making to honing your leadership effectiveness. Fall back on the Alumni Association and the Stellenbosch Business School. Engage for the needed tools and support to launch ahead. In our exhilaration in celebrating our achievements, we should not 
or we should take a moment to reflect on our journey with us. And when I say as Stellenbosch, I encourage you to consider the personal value that being an alum of Stellenbosch Business School holds for you. Let me reiterate that your affiliation with the Stellenbosch Business School, Ed, through the Alum Association, adds credibility to your professional profile and gives you access to many resources, including business knowledge, network opportunities, and potential career prospects. The Alumni Association is more than just a network, and I must emphasize that it is a community of like-minded individuals united by a shared commitment to ex excellence and continuous growth. It serves as a vibrant hub for collaboration, knowledge sharing, and personal growth. Take advantage of it. Embrace your alumni status with pride and enthusiasm. Stay engaged with the Alum Association. Participate in events, I have said that already. Remember that leadership can be lonely but you are never alone in our alumni community. Together, we can support one another, share insights, and positively impart the world around us. In closing, I would like to extend my heartfelt congratulations to each of you again. Your achievements are a testament to your hard work, determination, and resilience. As you embark on the next chapter of your journey, please, Continue to inspire others. Lead with integrity and strive for excellence in all you do. Once again, congratulations on this momentous achievement and may you enjoy a lifetime of success, fulfillment and lifelong learning as proud alumni of Stellenbosch Business School. Thank you and God bless us all. Kelvin, I'm done. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much, Dr. Geraldine, for that inspiring message around what the Alumni Association can do for us. Um, I want to thank you in particular to say thank you for investing the time. Um, leaders and executive leaders are exceptionally busy. And so the time that you have to invest with us who we'll still develop our leadership is not underestimated. And I want to say thank you so much um, for investing the time this morning. I want to echo what Dr. Uh, Abadu has said, um, and, and it reminds me of what Mr. Nelson Mandela, the late Mr. Mandela said. He says, we all want to achieve greatness, but you don't have to get there all by yourself. You can get there by standing on the shoulders of giants. And the Alumni Association is one such organization where you can be standing on the shoulders of giants. And to the NMDP, um, participants present this morning, you thought you're going to get away. Hey, no, 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 no. That was just motivation for you to, in future, continue to partner with us at Stellenbosch Business School Executive Development. Uh, and since you've now seen what the value and the benefits are of becoming a member of this prestigious organization. Once again, thank you, Dr. Abaidu. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time of the morning where we would like to introduce our keynote speaker for this particular um, occasion um, on the 5th of April, 2024. I've met this speaker um, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month or two ago, and was absolutely blown away by this gentleman's presence, even within the remote space. Ladies and gentlemen, and esteemed guests, it is my distinct honor, therefore, and privilege to welcome our keynote speaker and at this special certificate ceremony. Our speaker is not just a leader, he is a visionary whose impact resonates far beyond the borders of any map. Dr. Rutendo Wendingwe is not only the CEO and founder of Tribe Africa Advisory, but a beacon of inspiration within the realms of business development and strategic leadership. With over two decades of dedicated service, Dr. Rotendo's journey has been marked by a relentless pursuit of excellence. As the chief advisor and founder of Tribe Africa Advisory, 
He has spearheaded initiatives aimed at enhancing business capabilities across the African continent. His expertise extends far beyond mere consultancy. It is, a, it is actually a testament to his unwavering commitment to fostering sustainable growth and prosperity. His career is populated by a multitude of accomplishments within global organizations and beyond, from Deloitte to the British Chamber of Commerce and the US Department of Commerce. But perhaps what truly sets him apart is his passion for knowledge dissemination. As an international keynote speaker and published author, he has shared his insights and experience with audiences worldwide. So today, we have the distinct honor of welcoming Dr. Retendo Windingwe to our own historic day at Stellenbosch Business School Executive Development as we celebrate your success, your hard work, innovation, and commitment to inclusive development in our roles as leaders in Africa. Before I ask you to join me in, warm, uh, in a warm welcome um, to Dr. Rutendo Ndingwe, the only thing that I want to say to Dr. Rutendo uh, Ndingwe is to say, we still need to work on the soccer team that he supports, but we'll leave that for another occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, your hands and mine as we welcome Dr. Rutendo Ndingwe. <laughs> Four three versus menu. That's all I'm saying, Kevin. Four three versus <laughs> menu. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to you to imagine that it's 1974, and there are over 60,000 people packed in a stadium. Over 100 countries worldwide watching what is going to be the most cataclysmic boxing showdown in world history. In one corner, you have the world heavyweight champion. George Foreman. And in the other corner, you have the former world heavyweight champion, Muhammad Ali. The two questions that we want to answer by the end of this session is firstly, how is it that in eight rounds, the world boxing champion, George Foreman, lost to Muhammad Ali? And secondly, but more importantly, how can we apply this to you as leaders and your business strategy in doing business on the African continent. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they are from Cape, from Cape to Cairo, from Lagos uh, to Nairobi. I'm excited to take you on this journey in the next 15 to 20 minutes titled Winning Business in Africa, Rumble in the Jungle Reloaded. This session, which is based on four nuggets for a winning business in Africa with the acronym TITO to the power of RD, I want to leave you with some key nuggets with regards to doing business in Africa and motivate you and encourage you as you go through this important session as qualified and graduates of a Stellenbosch Business School. The four nuggets for a winning business in Africa I believe that I've drawn not only from the phenomenal fight between George Foreman and Muhammad Ali in 1974, but from my own experience, and I'll show you, share with you one or two of those in the session this morning, but also from thought leadership in terms of what's trending with regards to this beautiful continent called Africa. The first nugget, which I believe is absolutely crucial and contributed to the success of Muhammad Ali, as well as important for you in terms of doing business in Africa, is understand the territory, which is T. Second is I, which is innovation. The third is threats and opportunities and how to navigate that through that. The fourth is RD, which is have a relentless drive and determination. In this session, I'm gonna primarily focus on territory and have a relentless drive and determination, but always you can access my books and my thought leadership pieces that will give you input on the other two, although we'll touch a bit on them, but the primary focus today as I take you through this exciting journey, it's territory and have a relentless drive and determination. Before I embark on this engagement, a bit of who I am, I know Kevin gave you the, the official version, but let me give you the unofficial version of who I am with regards to this young, handsome man uh, with a nice yellow tie standing or sitting in front of you. From a personal perspective, I'm married with 
one wife with three kids and not vice versa, just for the record, not three wives, one kid, uh, that will be, that, 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 yeah, that is possible, but let's not go into that. Uh, I play basketball. I'm chairman, part and parcel of my kids' PTA. I'm an author, and the other boring details of myself you've been told. I've had quite a length of experience doing business in Africa, one part uh, to the other, as well as from an international perspective. And I, I, I participate in one or two boards that contribute to the economic and social impact from an Africa perspective. My qualifications have been shared with you. As Kevin highlighted, the greatest achievement that I've, I've done to date, the one that supersedes my academic qualifications, my corporate experience, my personal life, the most important thing that you must take away with you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you leave and want to know about Rutendo in terms of an accomplishment, is that I'm a Chelsea supporter. And unfortunately, we have people like Kevin who are still to be converted. But one day, ladies and gentlemen, we will win the Soccer Premier League. Okay. I've also published two books. Uh, one is called Rumble in the Jungle Reloaded, uh, which has been endorsed by 10 multinational CEOs and just gives some key nuggets about doing business in Africa. And I've also highlighted with regards to some of the key components that I'm shared with you today. Uh, and my second book, Reflections of the Son of the Soil, uh, gives a collection of 55 African proverbs. Also, this is quite as available uh, on Amazon and for both those in South Africa exclusive books as well as take a lot. Why am I here? I believe, ladies and gentlemen, similar to everybody who's gone through the program and gone through it successfully, Africa is open for business uh, like never before. Bye -bye. And, uh, she will not bother you later for the whole month. Okay, somebody's brought in Afrikaans, uh, but uh, the show must go on. Africa is open for business. And even if people interrupt us in the middle of the presentation, uh, the show must go on. So, do I unpack the two nuggets that I want to leave you with this morning? I want to just set the scene of the fight because it's absolutely critical by understanding the context of the fight that you have the foundation of the key nuggets that I want to share with you today. 1974, George Foreman was the world boxing champion. He was young, he was arrogant, he was undefeated. And he represents that organization that is a multinational, a big corporate. Its strategies have been successful all over the world and for them, uh, uh, being conquerors on the African continent is a walk in the park. So George Foreman represents the market leader. Muhammad Ali in 1974 was no longer the world boxing champion. In, in fact, he was trying to claw back to win that title. And he was the one who coined the phrase, float like a butterfly and sting like a, if you know the answer, just put it on the chat. Float like a butterfly, sting like a, and if you're able to answer that, it actually discloses your age, which is quite embarrassing, but let us move on. But Muhammad Ali represents the underdog. In other words, he's just as hungry to conquer on the African continent, but he's not as well-resourced and well-financed as the market leader, George Foreman. So Muhammad Ali represents the underdog. The location of the fight is also quite unique. To a smack bang right in the middle of the African continent, in a country called Zaire, the present day DRC, in a city called Kinshasa. The world had never seen a fight of this magnitude in a place like this before. The culture was different, the dynamics were different, the atmosphere was different. The fighters themselves had never fought in a place like this before. And that's the thing about Africa. As much as there's opportunity, there's also complexity and uncertainty. As I mentioned, over 60,000 people packed the stadium to watch the fight. These 60,000 people were obviously the spectators and they represent our customers. The people in their millions or in their thousands or in their hundreds of thousands that will ultimately make a decision on the product or the offering we take to the market. And last but not least was this gentleman, Mobuto Seseseko. Mobuto was the dictator of Zaire in 1974. And he injected 10 million US dollars of his own money to sponsor the fight. Well, we can debate that because he was a dictator. Where did he get the 10 million US dollars from? Did he just go to his ATM or? I think you get the gist. But ultimately, he sponsored the fight and he put in 10 million US dollars. Once again, highlighting the whole issue of Africa, as much as there's opportunity, there's also uncertainty. And at the end of the day, um, 
you are not really clear in terms of what you can get. But ultimately, if you work through the structures and the processes, you can be successful. So we set the scene of the find. Let us go into the first nugget, which is territory. Why was this important? How did this contribute Muhammad Ali being successful? Muhammad Ali flew in a few weeks earlier than George Foreman, and it allowed him to engage and interact with the people of Zaire to such an extent that on the day of the fight, in a stadium packed with over 60,000 people, as Muhammad Ali, who was the underdog, strode onto the boxing ring, the people were screaming, Ali Bumaye, Ali Bumaye, which when you translate it from the vernacular, it means Ali, kill him, Ali, kill him. In stark comparison, George Foreman was the world boxing champion who didn't engage and interact with the people of Zaire that much before the fight. When he strode onto the boxing ring, even before the, mark, the, the fight had begun, he had lost the crowd. In other words, he had lost market share. And what this underlines is that for you to be successful on the African continent, first and foremost, you must understand the very DNA and culture and the fabric of the continent because by doing this gives you that competitive edge over your opponents or your competitors. Africa, as we know it, is complex. Over 54 countries, 54 heads of state, actually it's 55 if you want to get political and including Western Sahara. But at the end of the day, I always say for you to be successful on the African continent is not to try and force homogeneity, but embrace heterogeneity. By doing that, it already places you in a unique place with regards to conquering the different opportunities that are on the continent. One of the frameworks I use around this is called the Calabash effect. Why do I call it the Calabash effect? If you look in your diagram, as we're all familiar with the Calabash, which is a urban or an, a rural utensil built out of a hard shell of, it can be a hard shell of a fruit or it can be out of a clay, um, a clay, a clay pot that, that you're so familiar with. But the reason I call it the calabash effect is that the only way you know what is in the calabash is if you get close. You can't see it like a glass from a distance. You have to be up close to the calabash to appreciate what the contents are, whether they're legal or illegal, that's a discussion for another day. But ultimately I think you're off, you appreciate that with the calabash for the contents for you to consume, you have to be up close. And the same thing so applies to Africa. For you to apply the context of Africa the dynamics of Africa and the continent, and to harness the opportunities and understand the territory, you have to be up close to the people, to the dynamics, over and above the data analytics and all the predictive analytics that are there. One key example of this is in understanding the dynamics of Africa, and I'll take to two components before I go into a case study as an example, is firstly, the importance of the nature of the people. If you look at the diagram that I'm sharing with you, you'll see in 1990, from an urban versus rural perspective, you can see Africa, based on what how we define urban rural, just at a broad level, with regards to access to utilities, location of people, telecoms, et cetera, et cetera. You can see the 1990s, most of Africa was probably in the rural area in terms of population. And this talks a lot to our grassroots politics. 2020, you can see there was a mild shift, 50-50 split between rural to urban population movement with regards to the African context. 2050, most of Africa, except for one or two countries, again, talking about access to, to utilities, uh, communication, health, et cetera, et cetera. Most of Africa by 2050 will be in the urban population. What does this mean? It means that the nature of the people in terms of their habits and their cultures to a certain extent be impacted. And you, as you lead and do business on the African continent, have to be aware of this. This can talk to lifestyle changes. It's like uh, health from a better work-life perspective, eating habits, as well as exercise and keeping healthy. More importantly, especially when you talk to health and production and farming, if everybody has moved to the city who's actually going to do the farming in the rural areas, it talks to mechanization, talks to AI, and I'm gonna talk the impact of technology around that. But all of these things, just highlighting the importance with regards to understanding why it's important, to understand your territory because it affects your people, it affects the businesses, and ultimately how you lead as key graduates on the African continent. Another key indicator doing business in Africa 
is highlighted with regards to the venture capitalists who are investing on the African continent uh, with regards to the last four or five years. There's been significant growth in venture capitalists, and these are people from first world countries investing in tech startups, specifically with the focus around companies that are producing solutions that positively impact Africa. Why is this important? Because it talks that the continent is rich with innovative solutions. And I'm not just talking about PESA, that's old news. There's a lot of new technologies coming out and countries that are attracting these investments irrespective of the challenge of having on the African continent, leading South Africa, followed by Nigeria, Egypt, and Kenya. In actual fact, over the last four or five years, the growth of VC investment in the tech startup space on the African continent has grown by plus or minus 200%. The key sectors, looking at the same number, I'm talking about last year, it was about 3.5 billion. The same numbers, if you look at it in terms of the key sectors attracting these investments, fintech, uh, e-commerce, clean tech, and health tech. Again, all of this taking, talking to the technology and the attraction of venture capitalists on the African continent. All right, just to give you some essence, I'm just going to give you a case study based on my own experience. Go to Nigeria, one of the countries I love and do business with. In 2010, I was part of Sage, a listed company of the London Stock Exchange that had 3 million customers worldwide. We're operating in 50 countries and we're one of the top three business software vendors uh, in the world. I was tasked as part of the Sage executive on the African region to lead the initiative of opening up growth and office and growing the Nigerian office. Just to give you some context from a GDP perspective, South Africa and Nigeria were more or less at the same level, but the opportunity for us as SAGE, we've been successful in other parts of the world, we've been successful in the South African market, we looked at the entrepreneurial spirit in Nigeria, the market, the startup companies, and we believed with our technology and our offering, we had the right solution to grow and dominate that market. In other words, we looked at ourselves as the George Foreman. Nigeria, we threw everything into it, ladies and gentlemen. We threw our resources, our capabilities, roadshows, marketing budgets, you name it. We threw everything in it. And myself, as the exec, I was at the forefront of driving this investment to grow the market. The specific product, product that we targeted for the Nigerian market was our startup uh, accounting package that was sold as a CD or a, a compact disc. And in South Africa, it was retailing for about 100 US dollars. We discounted it by 70% and sold it in the Nigerian market for 30 US dollars because that's how aggressive we were in wanting to take market share. But even after that massive discount, with our experience as a listed UK London Stock Exchange company, our growth in South Africa, we still battled to make progress in Nigeria and we were baffled. Why were we failing? With all the resources, we're throwing everything, discounted the product, why were we failing? It was only one, on one of my trips down there that one of my local colleagues took me aside and he said, Rutendo, I think I know why we're battling to grow in the Nigerian market with this specific program. He said, I'm gonna take you somewhere, but I want you to follow me. And don't say that you're from Sage, just shut up. That was what he was politely selling me. And let's, and I'll, show, I'll prove you a point. He took me to this market that you're seeing on the background. For those who are familiar with Nigeria, it's an informal marketplace called Keja. It's on the outskirts of the international airport uh, in Lagos on the mainland. And it's an informal sector where they sell all sorts of wares from tele cell phones to laptops to any kind of electrical gadget that you know. He took me through to this market and we waited through the crowd and we got to one gentleman who, had a, who was a vendor and he had a briefcase that was stacked with CDs. He asked the gentleman, sir, I would like one Sage CD. Without hesitation, the gentleman dipped into his bag. Now, to give you, again, better context, the size of this informal market was the size of the soccer stadium. For those in South Africa, uh, that's Ellis Park, uh, soccer stadium, or Loftus, you take your pick, or for any country you can imagine. But just to give you the physical size of this informal market. Anyway, the gentleman dipped into his bag, and he produced one CD. And I could see from the branding, although it was pirated, that was one Sage CD. He then asked the gentleman how much for this CD, and the gentleman again, without hesitation, said, I'll sell it to you for one US dollar, but I'm negotiable on pricing. I'll report it to you, I'll repeat that. He said, I'll sell it to you for one US dollar, but I'm negotiable on pricing. Bearing in mind that we had been selling that CD in that market for 30 US dollars after a discount of 
US dollars, 70%. So that was the first thing that shocked me. I went to research a bit about this informal market. It's called Computer Village, by the way. I found out three interesting things as I come towards the end of my presentation. First thing is that that market provided, uh, looked after 7,000 entrepreneurs, 50,000 uh, employees, people were employed amongst those entrepreneurs. The number that blew me away was the turnover that, that was going through that formal market that is no longer no bigger than the size of, any, of a football stadium was 2 billion US dollars. Sage, which was listed on the London Stock Exchange, had been around for 30 years, was operating in 50 different countries, was doing a turnover of 1.3 billion US dollars. We were being outstripped by a formal market in Nigeria by 0 0.7 billion US dollars. We quickly realized that as much as there was opportunity in Nigeria, we had to change our strategy, began to focus on the high end of the market, and to cut a long story short, we were successful at the enterprise market because piracy was regulated because of the nature of multinationals, but it was a big learning curve in terms of understanding our territory and then learning from there in terms of positioning ourselves. There's an African proverb that says, where water is the boss, the land must obey. In other words, for you to understand your territory and grasp it, it's not a matter of fighting it, but sometimes adjusting your strategy towards that. And the picture you see there is that of the Victoria Falls, which is a, a beautiful representation of the land and water getting to understand each other and being successful in producing this. The last nugget as I come to a close is have a relentless drive and determination. I talked about Muhammad Ali understanding the territory. The other thing that made him successful was that he had a relentless drive and determination in terms of sheer willpower with regards to wanting to win the fight. And for us in Africa, irrespective of our challenges and the problems we faced, as leaders who are graduating today, we must always remember that resilience through relentless drive and determination is absolutely critical. In order to highlight this even further, I'll end with this story in Kikaraju. In 1968, John Stephen Akwari was a marathon runner from Tanzania. His country in 1968 sent him to participate in the Olympic Games in Mexico, which was 5,000 miles away. He obviously flew there and he was quite excited. It was a big thing for them. And he went and represented his country. In the marathon race that he ran, as he was running in the marathon, somewhere along the line, he got quite injured. The paramedics had to pull him off uh, and actually attend to his wounds and certain fractures on his leg that had actually been broken because uh, of the way he had been injured. All the other marathon runners continued and finished at the stadium and met and completed on time. John Stephen Aquari insisted to the paramedics that he wanted to continue with the race, but they told him that you won't make it on time, you are injured, it's absolutely a waste of time because even your time won't be recorded. But he insisted that I want to go and finish the race. So he continued with the race and he got to the stadium just as people were about to close up, thinking that all the runners came and he was the last person that came into the stadium. The picture you're seeing there's with him in 1968 as he hobbled to the finishing line. And you can see the bandages on his right leg in terms of where he was treated. He got to the finishing line and the people surrounded him and they said, and especially the media, they said, John, why did you stress out? Why did you continue running? You know that you've not come on time. Why did you persevere? You should have just given up and just called it a day. It was his response on that day that has gone down on the annals of history, especially Olympic history, and has got him recognized not only in his own country, in Tanzania to this state, but even worldwide in the Olympic history. His response to why he continued, even though he, he knew he wouldn't be on time and make the recorded time was this. I want you this to sink in. It says, my country did not send me 5,000 miles to start the race. They sent me 5,000 miles to finish the race. Forward nuggets for a winning business in Africa, ladies and gentlemen. It's one, understand the territory. Two, have the opportunities through innovation. Three, navigate through threats and opportunities. Four, the relentless drive and determination. Focused on those first two, but have talked number two and three to a certain extent. Africa is open for business, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, it has never been closed. The question that I want to leave with you today is that is your business, are you as a leader ready for Africa? And with that, thank you and back to you, Ken.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Rotendo, um, for, for your part to our program this morning. There are sometimes people that you listen to, and then the only thing you can actually do is just to applaud and not say much. And so I have that kind of feeling as I was listening to Dr. Uh, Windingwe as he so captivatingly shared his four nuggets um, with us this morning for a winning business in Africa. I'm tempted to want to go on, on the pun of the nugget because that's one of my favorite food types to have, which is chicken. And I wanted to say not even the best chicken outlets can offer better nuggets than this. Well done, Dr. Rutendo. Well done for sharing those nuggets with us and so that we can continue to win in Africa. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the relentless determination and the last little anecdote he shared with us. For us, some of us this morning, it's the beginning of that 5,000 miles or whichever thousand miles it is that you need to journey on. Uh, it's the beginning. So let's continue with that sense of determination and relentless drive to also achieve our goals that we have set out for ourselves. Thank you so much, sir. And we wish you well with your future endeavors and many, many more books coming out of your pen. Thank you so much. As I was saying pen, I was thinking, Kevin, don't show your age. I mean, people don't write with a pen anymore when they write books. Um, but you get you get the point that I was trying to, to make. We've, we've arrived at the most important part of this morning, ladies and gentlemen. I trust that your excitement is as uncontainable as my excitement is, because it's such a beautiful um, sort of visual to see when our delegates uh, walk across our virtual stage this morning. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've arrived at the certificate award procession. Allow me just to quickly explain the process for this morning. What will happen is that the delegates will first walk across the virtual stage, which will be followed by the top groups, which we refer to as the syndicate groups. Um, and then after the top groups, we will then have the top students name of the top student walking across um, the virtual stage this morning. Now, I know that I've asked right at the beginning uh, during our household kind of conversation that we need to switch off our um, microphones. When the process in, uh, starts, may I please ask you to switch on your microphones? May I please ask you to remain keeping your, your camera switched on and that you please continue to make the loudest noise that you can to celebrate those delegates who are walking across the stage. We are ready for this. The moment has arrived. And to facilitate this part of the program for this morning, allow me to introduce you to my colleague, Mr. Mujahid Thibas. Mujahid is the proposal and design specialist within the Africa Channel. And so I have great pleasure in welcoming Mujahid, who will... Thank you, Kevin, for the introduction. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen and esteemed guests. It is with much gratitude, firstly, that we have to thank everyone who works in the background tirelessly to really assist with managing the programs and ensuring that we make a successful program. It is therefore with much gratitude and appreciation that I extend our sincerest thanks to our faculty and our learning process facilitators. Our learning process facilitators act as coaches, guiding delegates through the learning journey by providing them with feedback, assisting them with integrating concepts that faculties has introduced to them, assisting with monitoring their work and communicating participants constantly to assist them to prepare them with their BDL presentations and especially the final presentations. It's without the faculty and the learning process facilitators that we would not be able to achieve the goals we set out to achieve on our programs. So thank you to our learning process facilitators and our faculty. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge our program managers, Nicole Adams and Maliboka Moshapa. It is through their dedication and hard work in the background throughout the programs uh, that participants were, are able to reach the extraordinary milestones and unlock their leadership capabilities. Without their support, without their dedication, we also would not be where we are today. 
And it's also important for us to acknowledge our in-country partners. We have Rudolf in Namibia, Selassie in Ghana, Petruna in Zambia, Mbali, and the RISCOP team in Eswatini, and also Mariki and Global Natives team in Mauritius. And of course, there's One and Maliboha in Botswana, who assist with managing the Botswana SBS offices. And lastly, also dimensions in Zimbabwe. On behalf of the Africa team, I want to say a big thank you to you all for making our program success over 2023 and 2024. We look forward to even more success in 2024 and beyond. Thank you to all our faculty. Thank you to our learning process facilitators, our program managers, and all the in-country partners who has made today possible. We will now commence with the new Managers Development Program uh, certificate procession. On our new Managers Development Program, commonly known as the NMDP, we had 126 participants across three countries and 16 industries. The new Managers Development Program is designed to aid individuals to transition from being working professionals to manage and to assist them to manage others. The program assists with introducing fundamental principles of management and leadership while emphasizing self-awareness and in assisting them with enhancing their people management skills. When we design the program, the aim of the program is to empower participants and to enhance the individual performance by mastering themselves, but also assisting them with facilitating teams effectively and ultimately contributing to organizational success. We will now commence with precision. And as Kevin said, remember to make a noise, applaud your, your fellow peers, and well done and congratulations to our NMDP. Congratulations, Raina. Congratulations, Amanda. Congratulations, Eleni. Congratulations. 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 Congratul
Yes. Lele. Well done. 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 Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations, Congratulations, Well done, well done. Ah, yeah, well done. Congratulations. 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 Congratulations, Lavana. Congrats, 
Congratulations, Congrats, Congress, Congratulations, 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 Melissa. Congratulations, Alice. Congratulations, Mabeja. Congratulations, Mabeja. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, Shana. Congratulations. Congratulations, Hodo. Congratulations, Congratulations, Radhi. Congratulations, my team. Congratulations, Tepo. Congratulations. Congratulations, Mayawade. Congratulations, Godfrey. Congratulations, 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 Congrats. Congratulations, 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 Remember, 
Congratulations, Kuzan Balok. Thank Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Congratulations, KG. Congratulations, 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 treasure. Congratulations, to Congratulations, 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 Mutusi. Congratulations, 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 guys. Hello. Well, well, well. How exciting. How exciting to see all those people walking across the virtual stage as they received and celebrated the achievement uh, for 
for this for this uh, 2023, the year of 2023. Um, allow me to. It's not us. Thank you. To uh, mute. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, just a little bit of a technical glitch. Um, how exciting to see all of these wonderful people walking across the virtual stage. And uh, allow me to say thank you um, and well done and congratulations to everyone who received their certificates this morning. Well done. It's evidence um, and testimony to your, as, as our guest speaker would have said, relentless drive and determination to amidst everything that you are going through still to achieve what you have achieved. I want a, a special word of thanks to uh, Ms. Farmer and Mr. Harris, um, I think for achieving the uh, highest mark of 87%, and to Mr. Wantwa, uh, tough luck, my friend. And next time uh, when you do another program, maybe you will have the highest mark in terms of the top, top students. That is evidence, ladies and gentlemen, of the quality of delegate and participant that we have on our program. So well done and final congratulations to the NMDP class of 2023 um, in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached that stage where we would like to take a short leg stretch uh, for this morning. Uh, like I've indicated earlier in the day when we started, that we're going to have a five-minute leg stretch. I applaud you now to ask yourself to set your clocks in such a way, set your alarm or something that it will remind you to come back um, within five minutes time. Please go test your or do your lung function. Go check the plumbing if you need to, and we see each other within the next five minutes. Thank you for your time. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Trust that you had sufficient time to get some refreshment. Uh, trust that you were able to check the plumbing and do your lung function and that you are ready to, to journey with us as we're continuing with our certificate awards ceremony. Um, may I kindly remind you to please switch your cameras back on and as we're continuing, keep those microphones switched on so that or, or unmuted so that you can celebrate as the people walk across the virtual stage this morning as well. We are ready to continue, and at this point in time, I've introduced you earlier on to Mujahid Thebus. Earlier on, um, I'm going to hand back to Mujahid, who will continue to facilitate the rest of the procession. Thank you, Mujahid. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, I'm excited to announce that we will now commence with the Management Development Program Certificate Procession. On the MDP, we had 250 participants, six countries from six countries through Africa and 24 industries. The Management Development Program aims to cultivate entrepreneurial thinking in response to the dynamic business landscape. The emphasis of the program is on understanding the interconnectedness of business function and encourage man managerial isolation. Experience that we aim to empower participants to spot opportunities through innovation by honing their leadership skills. We will now commence the procession and remember, as with the NMDP, to make noise and applaud your fellow peers. Welcome, Katrina. Katrina. Wow. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Wow. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Well done. 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 Well done.
Congratulations, team. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank 
Congratulations. Congratulations, Congratulations, the Well done, everyone. Congratulations. Congratulations, Kito. Well done. Congratulations, what a name. What a name. Wow. Wow. Congratulations, Congratulations, Wow. Congratulations, Festus. Congratulations, Congratulations. 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 Congratulations.
Mr. Bashe, well done. Well done, Jack of us. Bossman. Bossman. Robbers. Yes. Robbers. Well done. Sabani, well done. Sabani, well done. The Well done. 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 Well well done. Well done. Well done, Leon. Leon, well done. 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 All right. Levy, well done. Levy, well done. Levy, well done. 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 Well Hey, Well done, Tanya. Congratulations. Tanya, well done. Well done, well done. Well done, well done. Well done. Congratulations, Judy. Congratulations, Lysias. Hey, Lysias. Lysias, well done. 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 Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Congrats, Maria. Congrats, Maria. Congrats, Maria. Congrats, Shima. Congrats, Shima. Congrats, Shima. Congrats, Shima. Well done. Congrats, Congratulations. Majid. Sibra. Well done. 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 Well 
Congrats. Helena. Well done. Congrats, Precious. Congrats, Congrats, Tonani. Congrats. Congratulations. 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 Well done, well done. Congrats. 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 Congratulations, well done. 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 Well well done to myself! Julia! <laughs> Julia, well, well done. done! Julia! Well, well done, done, Julia! Well, well done, Katie! 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 Well done, well done, Wendy. Well done, TV. Well done, TV. 
Well done, Nadine. Well done, Nadine. Well done, to myself. Well done, Winnie. Well done, Winnie. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well Well done. 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 Fire, <laughs> 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 Congratulations, Well done, Well done, Well done, Well done, like me, Go power the world. Well done, Congratulations, Hello. All done. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Congratulations, Susanna. Congrats, Susanna. Congrats. 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 Congratulations. 
Angel, well done. 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 Angel, well Congratulations. <laughs> Well done. Well done. Well done. Baby. Woo! Let me well done well done well well done, well done, well done, well done, Dini. Congratulations. Well done, Dini. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. Eddie. Thank you. Congratulations. Then we push up. Then we push up. Then we See you, buddy. Mate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Congrats, my man. Congrats, 
Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and well done to the recipients of the Africa MDP. Um, I am really, really pleasantly surprised at the high quality of the academic achievement. I was looking at those top students as they made their way over the virtual stage. And uh, as far as I can remember, it was up to about 89.5% uh, some of those top students. So ladies and gentlemen, I think let's give them a final round of applause. We can all put our hands together as we say thank you and well done to everyone who was a recipient this morning of the MDP in Africa. Thank you so much. Yeah. There's yeah. there's someone that said that's actually 90.5, not 89.5, as I've as I've mentioned. Um, but thank you so so much. Also allow me to just say a special word to those all of the top students in your different cohorts, just to say. You've done exceptionally well in the acquisition of that knowledge. And just a small little word of advice to say, please don't let your acquired knowledge get in the way of your learning. Always remember that knowledge doesn't mean anything unless it actually leads to a change in your behavior. So please don't let that happen. Um, I love this other quote that someone says, the brain works best um, when it works like a parachute, which is a parachute works best when it is open. And to those top groups, uh, the syndicate teams that did so exceptionally well, I just want to reiterate and say that's evidence of your ability to collaborate. In other words, to find synergy amongst your different members of your teams. So I want to congratulate you to say that you are definitely team players and probably that has led to your team achieving that high honors of being the top group in your uh, respective cohorts. Thank you so much once again. Ladies and gentlemen, we are heading to the final procession for this morning, which is um, the certificate procession for the SMDP. And um, as you, we all get ready, I'm handing back to my colleague, Mujahid Thebus. Thank you, Mujahid. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, now, as Kevin said, we will now commence with the Senior Management Development Program Certificate Procession. On our SMDP, we had 108 participants from nine countries, over 26 industries. Just to remind you, the Senior Management Development Program aims to our participants to make a shift from operational management to more strategic leaders. We, through this program, we're able to equip participants with a design thinking approach as they delve into strategic concepts such as innovation, sustainability, collaboration, organizational change, and business agility. But the ultimate goal of empowering senior managers to lead strategically in an increasingly complex environment. If what, ladies and gentlemen, will now commence with precision, and as always, remember to make noise for your fellow peers.
Well done, well Well done, well done, lady. Well done, star. Well done, lady. Well done, Mushe. Well done, Mushe. Congratulations. Well done, Chief. Well done. Well done, lady. Chief. Well done, lady. Well done, lady. Well done, lady. Well done, lady. Oh, well done, Victor! Well done, Victor! Oh, 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 well done, Patrick. Well done, Gabazo. Well done, Gabazo. Well done, Gabazo. Well done, Gloria. That's me. Gloria, well done. Well done, Gloria. Well done, Gloria. Well done, Gloria. Well done, Oscar. Well done, Oscar. Well done, Gamu. Hi, Virgo. Emi. Well done, Jesse. Jesse. Well done. Well done, Johannes. Well done. Well done. Well done, well done. Well done, Dr. Well done, Belinda. Oh, you. Oh, we saw Lydia. Well done, Lydia. Well done, Lydia. Well done, Kojeni. 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 Well done, Well done, Kylo. Well done, Kylo. Well done, Kylo. Well done, Marco. Well done, Martin. 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 Yo, how old are Martin? Congrats, Martin. Congrats. Congrats. Ah. 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 Ah
Zamekile. Well done. Well done. Hello. Well done, Mutani. Oh, 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 well done. Honey. Well done, honey. Emmanuel. Yambango. Well done. Wow, it's a pong! It's Congratulations! Congratulations, guys! Congratulations! Woo! Agents! Sometimes we'll make Congratulations! Okay! 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 Oh, yeah, too. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Congrats, that, that concludes our um, process session of the SMDP within the Africa Channel. Um, I think, ladies and gentlemen, let's give them one final round of applause before... I'm going to invite you to again ourselves, <laughs> and I'll give you a minute to do that um, so that we can proceed with the rest of our program. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Um, as we say congratulations once again to the participants and the recipients on the SMDP uh, within the different cohorts. The My colleague Mujahid earlier on referred to the fact that the SMDP focus and in helping uh, delegates to shift from a more operational thinking to becoming more strategic in their thinking. And so to the top groups, as well as the top uh, students in the respective cohorts, um, congratulations, as you've set yourselves apart as very astute strategists. And we hope and trust that your organizations will find or will get the benefit uh, from becoming such astute strategists in your respective roles. Once again, congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, we are nearing the end and the conclusion of our certificate and award processions. And as we are approaching the end of the proceedings, I'm going to invite someone to start us off as we are winding down, as we are preparing to land um, and our journey for today. Uh, I'm inviting the channel director for the Africa Channel, Mr. Jim Linsky, um, to, to sort of honor us with his presence and bringing some Scottish or British flair as Jimmy will uh, address and do the closing thanks and do some tributes and farewells. Jim, lovely to have you and thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Kevin. You're making me blush already. Um, I think many of you probably already know me. Um, for, for those who don't, and as Kevin has introduced me, I'm Jim Linsky, and I'm the, the channel director for the African portfolio. So greetings, everyone. And, and thank you for all of you who have stayed on right through the, the entire ceremony today. We really appreciate it. So as we come to the end of this year's um, Certificate Award Ceremony, um, I really just want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to every single one of you for all of your dedication in your respective roles. Firstly, to our graduates. And yes, I can call you all graduates now. Um, so absolutely wow. You have all just been absolutely amazing. 
I think it's um great a great great um great day to celebrate everything that you guys have done over the 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 last like for some of you or almost twelve months since you started these programs. So um, just thank you for all your motivation and all your commitment to furthering your professional development. And I truly, on behalf of everybody at SBS Ed, wish you all the best in your, your future endeavours. And we hope to see you on some of our programmes again going forward. Then, very, very importantly, is our clients and our in-country partners. Your support for us is amazing. Um, it's always so unwavering. Um, and we really appreciate the fact that you totally support our vision and our passion for developing people um, across Africa. And we wouldn't be able to hold events such as we have done today without all of your, your support. So, so thank you. And then there's my dear colleagues um, at SBS Ed. Um, you all know who you are, um, as well as our faculty, our LPFs and my own, um, my Africa team. Um, I really just want to thank everyone for all the hard work that you all put into these programs, both in front of the, the scenes and behind the scenes. I, I sometimes it amazes me just how much goes on to, to bring these programs to fruition and to make them such a success. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then finally, I'd like to sort of wrap up the, the thanks really to say thank you to the team who made today possible. Um, we've been planning this event since the end of 2023. Um, I just, the amount of work that has gone in behind the scenes to, to put everything together, um, to get all the, the presentations done, the photographs done, um, to calculate all the results, and then just to pull all this off together. And then obviously with our, our, all our guest speakers as well. So a huge, big, big, big thank you. Um, we really know how much effort went into it and you are all so, so appreciated. So to conclude today's special ceremony, um, a final big congratulations to all of our graduates. So guys, once again, huge big round of, a, round of applause. Um, this is a remarkable, remarkable achievement. And just remember, as you step into the future, to continue to embrace the values of responsible leadership and lifelong learning. Thank you, guys. Well done. And please go celebrate now with all your families um, and your partners and, and, and enjoy this special day. Thank you, Kevin. And Woo! once again, thank you so much, Jimmy. And come on, ladies and gentlemen, we can do better than that. Let's give Jimmy a wonderful uh, round of Thank you. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, we, Thanks, we, we take cognizance of the hard work you and your team put in, in, in Africa. And it's a pleasure, I think, for all of us to be here and celebrate with you um, as um, your programs have come to culmination. And ladies and gentlemen, we've just about touched down at the airport on the runway. So we're going to taxi in as we try to find our parking bay um, before we can all disembark from our aircraft. Um, allow me then just to do some final um, thanks. Uh, first of all, I want to say a great thank you to all the delegates um, for choosing Stellenbosch Business School Executive Development as your partner in your learning journey. We don't take it for granted. And we trust that the journey has been um, as pleasurable and um, uh, learning-wise uh, effective and efficient as it was for us as well. And we hope that we will continue to see you in future as you continue to choose us as your learning partner. To the families of, of the delegates, thank you so much for allowing your family members, uh, giving them permission, um, respecting them in that way. But it's more important to understand and recognize your support to them while they were um, on this particular journey. We know that without this kind of support, things could be far more difficult um, than it was for them. So we want to applaud you and acknowledge you as family members, partners, spouses, um, children, siblings, etc. cetera. Uh, we trust that you have indeed enjoyed the journey with us this morning. To our clients, um, as well as companies, uh, in particular, 
for, for your investment into the development of your people. We salute you. We applaud you. And we, can, we hope that we can certainly continue this relationship in future as well. I am ready to conclude. But I want to maybe just share this following little nugget of, of wisdom. Someone once said, a great accomplishment should not be the end of the road. It's just the starting point for the next leap forward. Our wish certainly is for you, our delegates and recipients of certificates today, that what you have achieved and what has ended for you today in terms of your programs, that is not the end of the road for you, but that is indeed just another starting point for the next leap forward. We want to say thank you uh, for being with us, ladies and gentlemen in the audience. Thank you for your presence here today. And as I am about to say goodbye, may I remind you to please do not to forget to share your journey on social media with us. As mentioned earlier on, you can contact us and share on any of the platforms that was listed earlier in the morning. On that note, like Jimmy said, please go and celebrate. I wish I had the power or the authority to say, it's the end of the workday for you. I don't have that power, so don't quote me on this. But whatever you do in your celebration, may I appeal to you to be responsible. Until we see each other again, thank you. <laughs>